And I'm joined now by the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Republican Congressman Michael McCall. Chairman, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, on the American hostages, we know obviously Americans are part of this larger group that is being held in Gaza by Hamas. Have you learned anything new about the Americans who are being held in Gaza right now? No, that there are you know, several of them. I know that I uh, just got the phone with the ambassador from uh, Qatar. Uh, Jordan's working on this. Egypt, Saudi Arabia, trying to get them out, trying to negotiate with Hamas to free these hostages that we know will be used as human shields uh, when the IDF uh, goes on the ground, which I would anticipate any day or so. And so what are your concerns for those hostages if that is going to be, I mean, we know that Hamas uses people as human shields. If they're still there and they have not gotten out by then and this is imminent, what happens to them? Well, it's, it's very um, disturbing. I mean, I've seen videos of some of the children uh, that they've taken. Remember, we saw the toddlers in the cages, and I've seen pictures of Hamas <clears throat> with these, you know, really the two, three-year-old toddlers, um, you know, holding them, but knowing that they're going to threaten um, Israel uh, for other conditions. Uh, they want uh, the release of a lot of uh, Palestinian Hamas hostages in Israel, but it's so sick that they use, you know, these little children uh, as pawns in their uh, terrorist uh, fight. Yeah, and Chairman, in addition to, to those efforts, we've also learned tonight that the U.S. is moving a second aircraft carrier that way. CNN is also now reporting that a Marine amphibious group is also headed towards Israel. Obviously, that's a lot of U.S. firepower near a very hot conflict. Are you concerned about direct U.S. military involvement here? Well, of course, we don't want to see uh, troops on the ground here, but uh, actually what the administration is doing in this case, I, I fully support, and that is deterrence. I think Iran needs to see this, uh, and, and most importantly, Hezbollah out of Lebanon needs to see us showing us for, a force by the United States, both in terms of the destroyer ships, the two aircraft carriers, um, and now we're sending special operators to train uh, not boots on the ground, but to train the IDF as they go into the second phase of the military operation, which will be going door to door to liberate hostages and eliminate uh, the terrorists. Um, I think it's important that we show that force. Well, my colleague Orrin Lieberman <clears throat> over at the Pentagon is also reporting that Secretary Austin is preparing for the possibility of deploying 2,000 troops to Israel. We are told these would be in support roles, medical assistance, logistics. Are you okay with that move? Do you think it requires congressional approval? No, uh, congressional approval would only apply if we are sending troops into combat. Um, now, I'm very cognizant of what's going on. I had a briefing in the Situation Room with the National Security Council about this very issue uh, and what would trigger a response from the Congress about, um, you know, a use of military force. And my uh, committee, the Foreign Affairs Committee, is a committee uh, that is responsible for either declaring war or an authorized use of military force. So, actually, I'm currently preparing a draft of that in the event it is called upon and is necessary, but most importantly, mm. supported by the American people. It's something that we're all watching closely. Chairman, obviously, you're on Capitol Hill right now. There is still no House Speaker. Oh, we've heard from Jim Jordan they plan to potentially have a vote as soon as tomorrow. I mean, given the fact that there, there is still no House Speaker, that it has gone on this long without Republicans being able to coalesce around one of your colleagues and therefore frozen the House from being able to do anything, including passing aid to Israel, I mean, do you have confidence that Republicans are actually going to be able to get that done this week? Well, I warned, <clears throat> I warned my colleagues, I did at the last conference, but look, this is a dangerous time. Uh, the world's on fire and our enemies are emboldened. I mean, Chairman Xi talked about how democracy doesn't work, and I don't want to prove him right. And I think the longer we go, Caitlin, without a speaker in the chair, uh, we cannot govern. So, you know, I've got a resolution, bipartisan, signed by 420 members of Congress condemning Hamas, supporting Israel, but I can't get that passed until we have a speaker in the chair. Same thing with the Israeli supplemental bill that we've been talking about. Uh, that could include Ukraine and Indo-Pacific and possibly border. Yeah. We can't get that passed unless we have a speaker in the chair. And we really can't play games anymore uh, with fire.
and I think fire is already out there. If Jim Jordan does become the next House Speaker, do you think the House will ever be able to pass aid to Ukraine again? I do. In fact, I, I talked to him today. I think he's amenable to a package, the one I talked really? about. Yeah, I think the one that I talked about, he has to respect the will of the conference, right? This conference can't be controlled by eight people. Um, and Jim Jordan seems to have more control over those eight than any. Um, but I, I believe um, that, uh, that there will be. I was at the Situation Room with the National Security Council just two days ago talking to the White House about a, a package, a national security package, that is going to be absolutely necessary to pass. So that every day that goes by without a speaker is another well, very did, dangerous. Did for Jim the Jordan States. make any assurances to you that he would pass more aid to Ukraine? <clears throat> he was uh, he was open to the fact of joining uh, both uh, Ukraine aid to uh, Israeli funding, which is absolutely necessary. I talked to the Israeli ambassador last night. They need ten billion dollars to sustain. Uh, this war and defend Israel. Chairman Michael McCall, thank you for your time tonight. Thanks.